we get started, this is not the kind of video I normally do. I usually fix things and make things from scratch of my own design. Uh, this video is the assembly of a 3D printer kit that I bought on eBay and I hope to empower you to make, an, make a choice to either buy this one, buy a different one, or not buy one at all by, by posting this uh, video. If you're not interested in 3D printing or 3D printers, this is not the video for you, but uh, the next one will be. And with that, let's get on to this so I can get back to making things. So I want to talk about my 3D printer build. It's an FL Sun Delta style 3D printer. I got it on eBay. Uh, it was offered with a buy it now price of $239. I made an offer of $200 and they countered with an offer of $235 with free shipping. That was the lowest price on eBay so I went ahead and took it. Uh, the reason I chose the Delta style printer is uh, uh, un unlike other printers uh, where each axis is a completely different drivetrain, on a Delta style printer all three axes are exactly the same. So fewer unique parts, I figure uh, if anything breaks I'll uh, be able to make a backup easier. So it arrived in a bunch of boxes, and I uh, unpacked all the boxes, and the one thing I was looking for was not there, the assembly manual. So uh, there was a 2 gig SD card in with the boxes, but it uh, was improperly formatted. In fact, it was just plain defective is, is what it was, because uh, there was nothing on it, and I was not able to format it. So I uh, contacted the seller, and within 15 minutes, they sent me a link to a Dropbox that had a version of the manual. It turned out later not to be entirely correct. There were a few changes, but uh, the, the customer service of this company has just been outstanding. Every time I've contacted them, no matter what time it is, well, it was 1 o'clock in the morning the first time I contacted them uh, here in California, and they got back within 15 minutes, but uh, I contacted them at 10 in the morning, uh, and they did the same thing. So with a Delta-style printer, everything comes in threes, and that means you have to do everything three times. And if you ever tried putting a triangle together with rigid corners, um, that's, that's a unique experience you uh, have to uh, slide them all together at once. And uh, it's not an insurmountable problem, but uh, I, was, uh, I was able to get it done. Anyway, here you can see in the upper right corner, we've got the base with its three drive motors. And uh, what I'm doing here is installing the top frame, which is where the idler uh, gears and the limit switches will reside. After completing assembly of the top and bottom frames, the next step was to assemble the three uh, rolling devices that roll up and down the uh, different axes. And uh, that came together really simple. The manual has very little in the way of uh, explanation, uh, but what it does have is photographs with uh, the number and size of screws per particular device that you're working on. Once the three carriage assemblies are put together, uh, the next step is to assemble the deposition head and its carriage assembly, then tie all four units together. This is where I discovered the first error in the manual. And what that was is the main body that holds the deposition head uh, is not the same in the one that I received as it was 
in uh, the manual. Uh, it was a pretty minor variation, and uh, uh, within 20 minutes, I was uh, on with tech support. The guy sent me a new photograph, and the, and the picture told me everything I needed to know about uh, how to get the thing put together. So at this point, uh, they had sent me new photographs, and uh, I uh, got it together once, but ended up having to take it back apart because I put the switch on the wrong side of that little carriage block. Um, it wasn't uh, really that big a deal. And uh, all these wires become confusing. Um, there are two fans on this unit at the deposition head. And uh, you see here I'm wrapping the wires uh, in, a, in a wire loom that they provide. And later I ended up taking that back off because I uh, didn't uh, label those two fans One of the cool features about this unit was that most of the parts were injection molded and not 3D printed. For those of you that, that don't know, uh, 3D printed parts are about the same consistency as like a Lego block and they break. Uh, injection molded parts are way tougher, but you see here I just had to break out the drill and enlarge a hole in, in those uh, little switch mounting blocks. So here it's really starting to come together. All the sub-assemblies are, are put together and you install the uprights and uh, slide, slide them into the little trolley mechanisms. Uh, you run the wires for the limit switches down through the railings. So the next thing is to install the drive belts, which is not a difficult task. They're uh, uh, just a friction fit. They slip into these little uh, channels and uh, the teeth intermesh with themselves and that keeps it in place. And there's a drive tensioning screw at the top that you need to make sure is completely loose before you start because I did not do that and ended up having to take out about another uh, half inch of slack in the drive belt later. So the last steps here are to assemble the filament feeder assembly and to uh, install the circuit boards and uh, this is where I discovered that the circuit board that I had uh, included with this was not the same as the one in the manual. It was only after we discovered this that they sent me a whole new manual with the current revision for my machine. So here you'll see me disassembling the unit and uh, the reason I'm doing this is because in the manual uh, they have the order of operations kind of out of whack. Uh, they have you put the uh, filament feeder on the top, but they don't tell you to do that until after, you, after you've already assembled it. And the only place for the wires to go is down inside the upright tubes. Uh, the only way to get it through would, would be to either uh, cut off and reinstall the connector on the wire or disassemble the unit. And since I didn't have the tool for that particular type of connector, I uh, went ahead and disassembled the unit, ran the wire down, down the track, and then put it all back together. So the wiring in this thing is a real spaghetti mess. It just lays down in the bottom. If you're not careful, it'll touch the bottom of the heated bed. Uh, there's no place to really route the wires. Uh, they do give you a lot of wire ties so you can tie it all up and hopefully it won't touch the bottom of the heated bed. They actually have you make little feet out of wire ties to put on the circuit board to keep it from touching whatever it's sitting on. And uh, uh, on, on the bright side, they do, uh, well, if you call them, they'll send you the uh, print file to print a mount for that circuit board. The final step on this assembly is to install the heated bed onto the bottom chassis 
Uh, it comes with some springs and uh, some mounts. It's uh, not too tough. Okay, well here's the smoke test. That's where we plug it in to see if it smokes. Brand new pancake fan makes that tickety tick noise. Isn't that great? I'm going to have to contact tech support again because the assembly manual did not include instructions on how to use it. But uh, this is a good sign. It came on. It's got an error message that it's not up to temperature yet, although it's not warming. That's getting warm. So, uh, yeah, it's off to a good start. So there it is, the FL Sun Delta 3D printer. Uh, the unit shows a lot of promise. It has a really large print area. It was uh, the least expensive Delta printer I was able to find, and I really wanted to go with the Delta because uh, one advantage is you can make it taller just by getting longer belts and longer tubes. And I like that idea. Anyway, um, click up here if you want to see my last video. Click up here if you want to see something YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.